here at the home of the Huddle Podcast, uh, sitting here at ITAP and Lee Summit. What a spot. I love ITAP. Love this place. That, and, that guy Josh up there, so accommodating. Oh, I love that yeah, guy. I love Josh. But, dude, we have one of the coolest guests on today. Two-time Super Bowl champion. Two-time, that sounds good. Two-time. That sounds real good. <laughs> back-to-back. Not just two-time, uh-huh. back-to-back. Justin Reed, baby. There he is. Appreciate it you guys. Let's, Let's, go. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Appreciate you joining us today. Absolutely. We're sipping on a little red wine. A red wine. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Mike's Liquor. Andy over at Mike's Liquor. A little Camus for those that uh, like wine. That's right. God, it's smooth. That's good stuff. It's so smooth. So I what have you been doing, man? So you just, I mean, you won the Super Bowl. Yeah, my calendar. What have you been up to? My calendar is stacked, man. I bet. Um, I got 12 flights. Um, or I should say 12 trips. 24 flights in the next eight weeks. Okay. Um, going all over the place. Uh, LA, Vail, Colorado, Tampa, Houston, Vegas, Phoenix. Kansas City, Baton Rouge, New Orleans. Um, so is this leisure or is this for business? I wish it was more leisure. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, a lot of business, um, conversations, networking, meeting people, um, trying to help develop myself more, trying to, you know, grow and mature and um, set myself up whenever I'm done playing. Yeah, yeah. I love that about you, man. I love that. And, you know, do you take a lot of that from your education at Stanford? I mean – that's a that's a yeah. that's a big I mean, time it, school, it right? Comes, it comes a little bit from that, but I think more of it comes from I've always been a guy that, you know, I take good advice. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think one of the best things I did is like, you know, guys that have done it before and are successful, you know, I asked them how they did it and they said, Well, this is how I did it and I I just listened to that, you know, and I just followed their path and tried to do the same thing in my own way. Sure. I love it. So I, I gotta know. It. So you're you're a Baton Rouge guy. Yeah. Grew up right outside of Baton Rouge. Yep. How far Born away? Just like 20 minutes outside? Um, probably not even, like 15 minutes. Really? Prairieville, Louisiana. So yeah. were you an LSU fan growing up? Grew up, up on LSU. Yeah. Heavy. Like everything, um, tailgating the night before. Um, like it was like a religion, man. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I mean, raised, fans are wild. Equally raised to love LSU as much as I was raised to hate Alabama. <laughs> got a lot of respect for him now, but yeah. Yeah, so I got to know. So obviously your brother went to LSU, was mm-hmm. super successful. How did you end up at Stanford? Well, one of the reasons that I went to Stanford was actually um, my brother set a, a very, very tall standard. You know, I was always chasing behind him, but in the midst of that, um, I didn't want to go and be his little brother following him to right. LSU. I wanted to go and blaze my own trail. So it was a combination of three or four things. Um, one, blazing my own trail. Two, um, Stanford University, being Stanford University. Heck yeah. You know what I mean? 40-year decision, not a four-year decision. Um, Coach Dwayne Aquina who had just left Texas and he had went to Stanford at the time and he had coached guys like Earl Thomas, Mm -hmm. Michael Huff, Sage Griffin, long resume of um, high caliber players in the NFL. So I wanted to be under his tutelage. Um, And then lastly, Eric was playing in San Francisco. You know, okay, yeah, I didn't even didn't even think about that. He was right down the street from Stanford. So I would go play on Saturdays and then I'll go watch him play on Sunday. And then after his game Sunday, we go back to his house and he'd break down the film on what they were trying to do and how it how it worked out in the game. So I Gave me a little bit of a head start on uh, the NFL. Man, talk about a head start. Yeah. The guy literally got done balling on a Saturday, went to watch his brother on Sunday, and then went and broke game film down. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was fun, man. I yeah, you had, a, you had a hell of a career at Stanford, too. I mean, mm-hmm. what, I think your junior year, you had five picks. Yeah. Um, you know, I was, um, I was actually going to be up for the Thorpe Award. I was going to be one of the front runners for the Thorpe Award the next year, and I was one of the – I was, was kind of hard for me to decide if I wanted to, to go or stay. Uh, yeah. My head coach, Coach Shaw, at the time, that's why I got so much love for him today. He actually told me to leave. No kidding. He told me to leave early. He was like, you're ready to go. You should go. You know what I mean? Most head coaches don't want to lose their best right. players, you know, but he has so much for his guys that he told me no, to go. That's man. a lot of respect there. Yeah. Yeah, so you. So it looked like, I mean, you were touted as like a first, everybody thought you were going to go first round, mm-hmm. second round, and you slid to third. Is that right? Yeah, life happens. What was – uh? Walk us through those emotions of, you know, um, draft day. Yeah, draft day felt like strong that I could go mid, mid, late first. Um, didn't think there was any chance in hell I would slide past the second. Right. You know what I mean? But then, you know, first round comes and goes. Second round comes and grows. You know, those feelings of like, man, what the hell is going on? You know, start to set in. You know, my parents went through this big draft party. Um, started feeling, honestly, a little bit embarrassed that, you know, my name wasn't called yet. 
Um, but eventually, I was the third pick of the third round. Uh, just being chosen, all those feelings go away. You know, it's nice to have a direction and know what's going to happen next, and just thankful um, that it still what still were drafted. And in hindsight, I'm actually uh, happy that I didn't go first. So I didn't have to deal with the the fifth year option. I got to go right into free true, agency true. and right. and come join the Chiefs and win two. Yeah, Super baby, it, 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 it yeah. kind of worked out. I'd say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, a situation like that too. You know, you got a lot of hype, right? Like you mm -hmm. were told leave early. Like you're hyped up. Talking about mid to end first round. Like that's got to fuel a fire a little bit too. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. Maybe put no, a little, wanted, put yeah. a little chip on your shoulder. Yeah. I wanted everybody to feel it that we played, you know, week in, week out. I want them to know like what they missed out on. Right. I love that. Yeah. I love it. I love that fire and we're not to jump ahead, but you were mic'd up one game. Okay. Yeah. And you said something on that mic up, and <laughs> that, that little saying. What do you say? What'd you say? If they run it, we stick them. If they throw it, we pick them. Yeah, if they run it, we stick it. They throw it, we pick yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, I, love I that. say that every week. Week I in, love week that. out. That's what we say to the DBs, man. We're going to set the tone physically early. Um, the ball's in the air. We're going to go snag it. But, you know, everyone thinks that DBs don't like to tackle, but we're going to make it known, man. You run our way, we're going to cut you in half. Yeah, yeah. Well, the first time I can remember Justin Reed was that. I think it was your rookie year with the Texans. Mm -hmm. I think it was like 100. In one yard, yeah, one on one, yep. pick six. It's Alex Smith, actually. I'm like, yep. I'm like, dude, this guy is something. Yeah, that was the first time I think I remember hearing your name, and I was like, this guy's, this guy's gonna be something. Hell yeah, that was a fun play, man. Yeah, I can imagine. Took a, took a yard, man. <laughs> guy went coast coast. Gosh, what? Um, to go back to Stanford a little bit. I mean, you still talk to those guys. Like, they're still your boys, right? Yeah, absolutely. And like, what was your favorite thing? I mean, obviously, you experienced, you know, high caliber college football. Mm -hmm. And now you're at the podium of, of the NFL, right? Yeah. What was your favorite thing about college ball? Like, what was it like that you still think about today? Just um, my favorite part was that a lot of my teammates, we stayed in the same um, dormitory. Like apartment units weren't really a thing at Stanford. Um, so it was more of a dorm lifestyle. Um, so we were all right down the hall from each other. You know, we easily just walk into each other's room, play games, hang out. Um, we did everything together, you know, go to class together, um, go to practice together, grind through winter training, which was brutal, but, brutal. you know, made us so much more tough. Um, so just the, those memories of, of going through hardship and camaraderie and building that brotherhood, man, um, it's different when you come to the league. One of the things that I think made um, our unit so special this year, especially defensively, is we got a little bit of that back, that it felt like a brotherhood. We mm -hmm. hang out all the time. And I think that that's just so important. But my first four years in the league with Houston, um, you know, it just felt a little bit more like a like a job. You know, right. guys had kids, guys had families, they had other priorities. Um, you clock in, you'd work, you'd get your stuff done, you'd go home, and you know, you'd, you'd say, "All right, see you tomorrow." You know, and there wasn't as much post practice, just hanging out and doing stuff. Right. That's important for a defensive backfield to be on that same level, right? Yeah, absolutely. It, for you guys to know, like, hey. Sneed's going to be over here. You know, you know, you this, this cat's locked down, right? You yeah. know how those cats are going to play together, you know? Yeah, when you have that, that feeling of, of love and camaraderie with each other, man, like if we're in the middle of battle and I'm like, I come up to you and I'm like, I need you. I need you. You know what I mean? We, we got to work together. You know, that means so much more when you're tight knit as a group than when you're just, instead of just two coworkers working together, you know what I mean? If you, if you guys don't have a relationship together and someone says that to you, you're just going to brush it off like, hey, man, you do you, I'm going to do me. You know, but it means something different when it's coming from your homeboy and it's coming from your brother. And, you know, you're ready to go to war for each other. And it's like, I don't mind throwing my body in the fire to make sure that you get the play. Right. You might go with that you know extra I mean? 10%, right? Yeah, you that know extra what I mean? 20%. It makes a difference. For your guy. Yeah. Take me to the gym, man. I'm fired up right now. I love that. This cat's got me fired up. <laughs> I love it. Um, so rolling into this season, right? Obviously last season electric, right? Mm -hmm. How much fun was that? Rolling into this season, you guys always had that in the back of your mind, like, hey, it's time to go back to back. Like, yeah. you, like there is no other option at this point. Is that right? I mean, is that, do you no, guys absolutely. have that mentality? Yeah, what I love about it here is, is, is that's the standard, man. The standard is the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't want to settle for anything less than that. So uh, coming in the training camp, you felt it. And um, man, we just went out and, and found a way. Who's your best friend on the team? Um, Who's best that friend dude? on the team, um, somewhere between Mike Edwards, um, Sneed, and then uh, McDuffie. Okay, he's a he's a young cat, man. He's got he's yeah, got I something done, man. He's he, he's got a fire to him. He's physical. 
Um, he's, he's silent, you know what I mean? He just comes in, he's humble, works hard every day, and just locks people down, bro. It doesn't matter who's lined up across from him. Yeah, so I mean, you guys, I mean, we, Chiefs have a young defense, right? Yeah. I mean, we have one did, of the youngest rosters in the league. Yeah, I mean, did yeah. you know coming into the year, like, man, we really, we've got a squad. I mean, no, did, I knew it. You knew I it? I knew it, yeah. yeah, immediately in training camp. I mean, when you're going to get a guy like Patrick and Travis, and you know just how talented they are, and we're able to have the success that we had in training camp, um, we knew that we had something special. And it's, it's a lot easier for guys to buy into the system, too, coming off of already winning a Super Bowl. Sure. Because you know that it works. And honestly, in some ways, it helps that your offseason is a little bit shorter, so you, there's less time to forget things. Um, but you come in there and it's like, um, guys are just on it, man. It was tight. So we had, um, we had, we had uh, Brady Cook on, the quarterback for Missouri Tigers, last mm-hmm. week or two weeks ago. And we talked about how there was a game that kind of set that, that tone for the season, right? And it necessarily isn't always a, a blowout, right? Mm-hmm. It's a game where you're struggling, right? It's a game where you may, may have lost. Was that Raiders game this year? Was that it for you guys? On Christmas Um, Day? I think as a total team, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Um, You know, I think that we were pretty consistent um, defensively all the way through the season, but I think that 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 home loss um, against a team that we won the previous 15 times in a row um, was a reality check that we needed that, hey, you know, if we don't come in here and have the right mentality to take care of business, it's not teams aren't just going to roll over and lay down for us. We got to go out and take it. Right. And you're yeah. going to get every team's best, too. Yeah, absolutely. Right? I mean, you're coming off a Super Bowl win. that's what you want as a competitor. You absolutely. want everybody's best, so there's no excuses. What would what you say? We're the villains now. Yeah, absolutely, right? man. We're the I, villains, I, I can dude. live in that, I can you live like in that? that role. You like that? 100%. Yeah. I'll tell you, the only thing better than um, hearing 100,000-plus people cheering an arrowhead, going nuts, throwing water and all that, is hearing 100,000 people go dead silent because you just <laughs> ripped somebody's heart out. Was Baltimore was just absolutely dead silent? Dead silent. Dead silent, shocked. It was it was awesome. Is Arrowhead not the best place to play? Oh, absolutely. Because you played there, so I, you, I got you, to live on both sides of it. Yeah, you were with Houston. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Was that your second year in the league, or um, third year in the league? We played Kansas City in the divisional series or the divisional, the divisional round. That was the second year. That's that right, because that was that game you had that massive hit on Tyreek yeah. Hill. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I remember that one. I actually thought we were going to win the game after that. I was like, I, man, Tyreek's out of the game. We're going to double the shit out of Travis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, shit, you guys were up. You guys were up twenty-one nothing to start that yeah. game. Yeah, yeah. And that, I mean, that was at the and time then, where, and and that's why again, that was a big leadership and a growth moment for me. And that's what I preached um, to guys this year and last year that you know it's not over till it's over. I've lived on both sides of it. Yeah, uh, the Cinderella story of the comeback. And the nightmare of, of giving away something that you felt like was in your hands. Yeah. So what is it like playing at Arrowhead at, as the opponent? Um, like compared to playing at Arrowhead as, a, as an active chief? Yeah. You know, when you're on the sideline and uh, like they're, they're pretty quiet whenever we're out there as a defense because Patrick's on the field. But when you're watching our offense play and it's just so loud, man, you're struggling to have a conversation with the guy next to you. Right. Um, and there's a tangible feeling of momentum that comes from the crowd. You know what I mean? So I, I, we felt it, you know, whenever we felt like we were being, uh, when I was playing with Houston in 2019, that divisional game, felt like we were being dominant. And, you know, the, quiet, the crowd, we took the crowd out of it. Right. Um, but then when they had that, um, the, the fake punt stop, the kickoff return, um, the fumble on our kickoff, you start to feel the crowd get louder and louder and more crazy. And you start to feel like it's just bearing down on you, you know, from all angles. And that, that comes directly from Chiefs Kingdom, man. So mm-hmm. uh, it's impactful, man. Yeah, and that's that's one question we really want to get into. So now that you're you're on the good side, right? Yeah, <laughs> and and you're coming in, offense just drove the field, just put seven on the board, and you guys come out, and that place goes shit bananas crazy. Yeah, right. Yeah, like how does that feel out there? Right, like yeah. that's got to like throw you adrenaline feel, through the you body. You feel invincible, bro. You feel invincible. You're you're willing to put it all on the line just because you see you know all the excitement and you know. People want to see that um, that physicality, and you want to bring it. And, you know, keep the party going. Yeah, yeah. When uh, what what game was it? When Willie looks back and he goes, "Hey, man, we need we, we need some swag surfing here." What, yeah, what that game was, was um, I think that was Miami. Was that, that was Miami? Miami? Yeah, that was Miami playoff game. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. No, actually, no. It was the game before. It was Cincinnati. It was Cincinnati. It was That's Cincinnati. right. Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. When that song comes on, like, what does that mean to you guys? <laughs> I mean, it, there's, I, and you don't have to go over, but I know there's a behind the scene deal in the locker room about that song. Yeah. That just gets you guys fired up. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's, it's something that I feel like everybody on the, on the team gets behind, you know, 
it kind of puts you in a, in a groove, like chemistry wise, that you guys all, you know, dancing together, having fun, turning up. Um, and, you know, it's like, man, it's kind of like you're almost mocking the other team, too. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, yeah, we're having a party over here on you guys, man. You got to do something about it. I love that's that. What I got to ask, too. Like, so out, outside of, of football, like, you guys are all hanging out. Like, who, who's the guy that's hosting on the team? Uh, a lot of the times on the defensive side of the ball for the DBs is me. Is it? Yeah. So Chris has done um, one group activity before. I usually take care of the DBs, getting them together. And then Pat and Trav uh, do a lot of stuff with the offense. Gotcha. But I threw a Halloween party, though, that um, we invited both sides of the ball to. Uh, what would you, you dress up as? I came as Jack Sparrow. Okay. Yeah, Jack Sparrow. I, and I love Halloween, too. It's like my <laughs> favorite holiday to dress right. up. I go all out. I hire a, I hire a makeup artist. You know what I mean? No we shit. do the eyes, we do the makeup, we do the uh, fake beard, fake hair. Love it. All of it. You know, uh, we had um, the the mask, the green mask, you know, the yellow suit yeah, with, yeah. The, with the green face. Yeah. Um, I think that was Donovan came as him. His, his costume was pretty sick, too. I got you. That's badass. Yeah. That's, that's, so, that's so cool that you guys have that, you know, like you said, because other places don't. It's a business, mm -hmm. right? You're going to go this way. These cats are going to go this way and just see tomorrow, you yeah. know? Yeah. And I think, you know, in college, I always heard X's and O's is one thing, yeah. but Jimmy's and Joe's is the main thing, yeah, right? Absolutely. And if you don't put those Jimmy's and Joe's together that are on the same page, mm -hmm. I mean, it's a job. Yeah, right? it's a job. And the and the the impact of a team, man. It doesn't matter if you have an all star roster if they're not a team, right? I Absolutely. mean, you see that in the NBA, you see it in the NFL, it's on, in every sport. Yeah, yeah. The team, bro. It's about the team. So I got to know this. So when you were at Houston, obviously. There was, there was a little bit of shit talking back and forth between you and Tyreek, right? You mm -hmm. read a little bit, a couple of the headlines. And you come in, he goes out. Yeah. And now you guys are right back in it. Yeah. But we're here at home, right? Yeah. Yeah. Did that kind of carry over to that game? Was there, a, was there a, I mean, obviously, from yours perspective, you're like, hey, he's coming back what he used to call home, and it's my home now. Yeah. Like, were you just <laughs> fired up? You know what? Uh, I wouldn't say I was fired up in a one-to-one in a -one yeah. Against Tyreek, I was fired up that we we're going against Miami. Yeah, right. Um, and that shit it was going to be the coldest game in mm -hmm. in uh, third coldest in NFL history, coldest in Arrowhead history. Um, and I think that we we're hungry and you know trying to feed on the fact that we knew them coming from Miami that they weren't going to be prepared for it. Yeah. Um, so did I you think even, it was did more you notice so how way. cold it was out there, or were you just like? So pumped up. Yeah, that shit was cold, bro. It was, it was really that, that shit was freaking cold. cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was cold. better. It was better for us than it was for guys sitting in the fan in the stands. But you know, yeah. I seen the videos where you know they had the water bottle in the refrigerator and they take it out of the fridge and it froze instantly. Yeah, or somebody orders like a beer crazy. and it freezes yeah. right away. Bro, uh -huh. I usually sit up next to Jesus in section three forty five. Okay. <laughs> Club was selling for two hundred dollars a spot. I upgraded so fast, <laughs> so fast. Hey, but we were we we were literally in the parking lot five hours before kick. You're wild. I love it. And I, I mean, it. The, the place is packed. I and love it. And these cats were like, do you, like obviously, you know, you guys are on the bus right in, right, mm -hmm. getting ready to go on game day. You see a little bit of that action. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of these stadiums are down in like downtown areas, right? Yeah. It's not yeah. like Arrowhead out in the middle of a field. Mm -hmm. Do you see like do you see that same type of passion across other fan bases? Or is like Kansas City just different? Yeah, not not in the NFL space. I, I give credit to Buffalo. Yeah. Buffalo has has that same culture. Um, but you're right. But I think Arrowhead feels yeah. more like a like you're at a college. Yeah, experience. absolutely. Like you've absolutely. been in a game. I felt like, felt like LSU. I was at LSU. You like it's I mean? wild. It's, man. Like it's, it's it's almost like a religion. Like people love it. We bleed it. You know, it's different. Yeah. So I got to ask you too. So we were just talking about you know lining up against Tyreek Hill. Um, who are a couple of dogs like in the league that you line up against them and it's just like. Yeah, you know these, du these dudes yeah. are different. Uh, Nick Chubb, okay, he's definitely a dog. Guy just runs hard, man. He's consistent. Um, some other dogs is I say is um, you know what I I I put um, what's his name Adams Devonta Adams in okay there. stud. Um, no, I'm sorry, not um, oh, why am I slipping his name with the Raiders? Uh, yes. You're talking about Cooper. No, no, no. That's no. Devontae Adams. Adams. Yeah, Devontae Adams. That's Devontae Adams. I was thinking of Devontae Smith with the – Yeah, I wanted to make some – Yeah, Devontae Adams. We'll edit that. Um, yeah. yeah, appreciate that. We'll edit that out. Um, oh, McCaffrey, definitely a oh, dog. Yeah. That guy's engine is crazy, bro. I mean, even think back when I played in college with him, we used to have these um, these circuit competitions, and he is the only player that ever beat me. No kidding. Yeah, he doesn't get tired, bro. Like, like when we practice together, you know how normally guys run a rep, like running backs get the ball, they run about 20, 30 yards, they turn around and run back. We'll be at our own 40-yard line. He's running to the end zone Jeez. every play. Like, 
every single play. Like he never not once didn't stop uh, stop before the end zone. True Man, dog. That's crazy. Yeah. As um, says, some other dog. dogs, uh, Trey Smith, okay. dog. Um, Quentin Nelson, dog. Uh, Are you boys with Eddie Lacy? Because he went, did Eddie Lacy go to the same high school? Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Did he play with your brother? Yeah, he did. They played, um, they were one year apart from each other. They okay. played three years together. Okay. And yeah. he went to the dark side when yeah, he was in uh, Alabama. <laughs> I got some fun stuff. Eddie, Eddie is such a character, man. Is he? Yeah, he was always big in high school. He had a spin move. I mean, this guy would be playing basketball while guys are all practicing and just show up out there. And, no shit. Yeah, and just still go crazy. <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was nuts. Well, shit. And you were a, so you you played a little soccer in your day, right? I did. That's and where your, my kicking background comes from. And your I think your brother played. Did he play D one soccer as well? Yeah, my middle brother Ryan. Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I think a lot of people don't. I think a lot of people want to know like where that where your kicking background came from. Yeah, we all started out playing soccer, man. I didn't yeah. even want to play football. Like, I didn't Seriously. play Little League football. I wanted to play soccer. Is your high school known for soccer? No. No? No, no. I don't think any high school in Louisiana is known for soccer. Yeah. When right. it's, all, it's all football, it's all football. And baseball. Yeah. 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 So are you, um, are you a big soccer fan still? Um, yeah, I like watching the games. When Messi comes to town out here, I'm going to go to it. Oh, hell yeah. Yeah, but, you know, I grew up playing it in my, my high school football coach. Um, a little bit because of the success that Eric was having, my older brother. You know, he came and was like, man, you just got to give it a try. You know, like your brother's doing all this, you know, just give it a go and see if you like it. Um, so he convinced me and I came out and gave it a go. And uh, I thank him to this day because, it, you know, it worked out. Yeah. Did you and Eric ever, did you guys play in high school together? Yeah, nah, no, we're too far apart. You we guys only, are four years apart? Um, five. Five. So you just, only, just missed each mm -hmm. other. Okay. We've only played on the same field one time. Uh, that was my, I think it was my second year in, in the league. And he was playing for... Uh, Carolina Panthers. Okay. Yeah, they came on top on that game, unfortunately, yeah. for me. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about this kicking. Unbe unbelievable. Th this, may f this may surprise you. I'm a kicker, too. All right. I love the old yeah. square two boot, the old DOS yeah, boot. Yeah, you, okay? you do the, 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 the old steel toe, or you hit it on the side, or how do you do it? My boot in high school had a square toe on it, and it had shark <laughs> teeth on it. And we got we got 25 <laughs> seconds to put DOS boot on, dude. Is that, yeah, if you hit that thing in the right spot, it is gone. Bro, it's gone. <laughs> so let's talk about that game, right? When Did Toe come over to you and say, hey? He said, you're up. That's exactly what he came and said, you're up. And I was like, all right. <laughs> was, I mean, now, do, you ever practice, do you ever practice kicking? Yeah, but I do it for okay. fun. You know, okay. I just go out, like, I'll go out before pregame, and I just do it just to have I mean, a good shit, time. I think I saw a video, was it a training camp, where you mm -hmm. hit a 65? Yep, yeah. That's, le that's legit, that happens? Yeah so, I, yeah, so I play around with it, but it's, it's still legitimately practice for me, you know? So um, I, I, used to, I used to actually make some money on that when I was back in Houston. I bet. Uh, new guys would come to the team, and I used to bet on be like, hey, you know, I'll make this. I can make. I bet I can make a twenty-yard field goal. You know, I'll undersell them. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? They're like, like, nah, man, you seem too confident. Back it up to thirty, and I would fight them back a little bit, yeah. and I eventually agree to it. And then I clear it by twenty yards. <laughs> he's hustling. Yeah, yeah. Dude, sixty-five. Yeah, it doesn't work No joke outside. <laughs> That's no joke. Mm -hmm. No joke. So, are we? We looked this up. I couldn't find it. Are you the only player in the history of the NFL to block a field goal? And kick a PAT in the same game as a non-kicker, or I mean, just any player in general. I, I think you are. I can't imagine. I think, that's yeah, happening. I think there's not a whole lot of guys that played. Um, I know Ocho Cinco kicked, Julian Edelman kicked. Shit, but um, they didn't. They, I'm sure they didn't block one. Though. Yeah, I don't know. None of those. I might be the only one, man. Did you see that highlight against Denver when he didn't even fire off the line of scrimmage the first time? Oh, he was no, just. That, that was. You sick. said you were, yeah. read, you were reading <laughs> the holder sick. and kind of how he was uh -huh, interacting. Uh -huh. Bro, you came off that edge like a piss missile that next one. Yeah. I love You know that. what? I tell you what, I, I really thought I was going to get one against San Fran, too. Really? We, yeah. had a, we had a killer key on him, but I was just waiting on us to be like fourth and longer than five, but all the field goals that kicked was fourth and four. Yeah. So I wasn't going to risk. I was going to risk the false start and get right. my first down, but I had a hand key on them. I have no doubt in my mind. I, like in my head, it was a guaranteed block. No shit. We got the right situation. It was a guaranteed block. Yeah, dude, you blocked one in the in the, in the Super Bowl. I don't know if my heart could have took it. <laughs> I was straight into a heart attack. I was so lucky, yeah. man. What a game, though, dude. Yeah. What a nuts. Unbelievable. I think we're all about to have a heart attack. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but now nah, we never lost faith, man. Like like you said, that that divisional game. I've I've lived both sides of it. That's true. You know, you got to play the full game. That's badass. And so now, now we go back to back to back. Yeah. We go three P. Three P. And so I mean you're you got some downtime, right? But mm -hmm. I'm sure you're still training, you're still working out, you're still grinding, ready to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When uh OTAs start in what, June? 
Uh, no, OTA starting like mid April. Mid April. Yeah, it's right around the Man, corner. You don't have no much. Time, you don't have much time off then. Mm-hmm. Jeez, telling you, it's, it's a good problem to have. But yeah. And you decided to be here on the Huddle Podcast with us. Yeah, hey, I'm here with you guys, man. dude. We, that's we appreciate yeah. it, dude. Let's um, let's get it, get a little personal life here, right? So okay. you're you're into business, you're into real estate, right? Mm-hmm. We're both obviously real estate agents here yep. in Kansas City. Talk to us, like, where does that passion come from? What does that look like? Um, I'll tell you what, it actually came from my middle brother first. So my middle brother is a real estate agent. Okay. And he started getting into it first because he was trying to find um, gen- um, financial freedom. And it's just like a side hustle that he started doing real estate. Is he still in Louisiana? Um, yeah. Okay. So he ended up um, kind of putting me and my older brother Eric on it. I ended up catching the bug with it. Um, I went to this pro athlete community conference that was in Tampa a couple years ago and got introduced to some people that were doing um, residential, that were doing um, commercial, and that were doing um, multifamily. You know what I mean? So those conversations just ended up being really stimulating for me. And, you know, got to talk about all the, the tax benefits too. And, you know, it just makes a lot of sense that, you know, you can you can write off a bunch of uh, a bunch of stuff. And, you know, as a as a young guy that has time to sit on um, property, you know, it just works out well. The fact that you can (laughs) the fact that you do that, right, you have that passion. Mm -hmm. Do these offensive coordinators really think that slants on fourth and goal is really going to (laughs) phase this cat? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Like, you know, I mean, that that's so cool that you have that that passion right yeah because as much as i got about a bunch of buddies that played you know they played anywhere from you know three years you know up to 12 years yeah it's gonna end someday yeah right and yeah. you gotta have a plan and it sounds like you have that plan yeah i'll tell you some of the best advice that i got was you know you really want to lay seeds and make connections while you're still playing yep you know your first two or three years you know stick the football make sure everything is football because football is keeping bread on the table Um, But once you start to have a little bit of routine and maturity in it and, you know, you can handle a little bit more on your plate, you really want to take advantage and start, you know, meeting people, mixing, mingling, getting contacts, um, because you're a lot less interesting when you're done playing um, than you are when you are playing. So um, for those listeners out there, our athletes, uh, make sure that you're also doing that. Yeah, you got to strike while the iron's hot, man. Yeah. You guys heard that from a back-to-back Super Bowl champion, right? These cats that think that they're invincible, it ain't going to end. Mm-hmm. Get your mind right. And it's for all of us someday, man. Either you're going to walk from the game or the game's going to walk from you. Right. That's right. So we're in the off season. We talked a little bit about where you're going, what you're doing. Let's say we're in season, right? Mm-hmm. Um, it's day off. What are we doing? Like, we're going out to eat somewhere. We we chilling by the off? pool. Yeah. Um, well, I got a golf simulator that's in my basement. Let's go. <laughs> I usually spend a lot of time on there. What's your handicap? Oh, um, man, I'm probably, I'm probably mid-20s right now. Mid-20s. Yeah. 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 You got some work to do. Now, let's talk about your nonprofit, yeah. right? Um, Jay Reed, indeed. Mm-hmm. You've got a big golf tournament coming up here in a few, shoot, like two months, right? Yeah. At the oh, National. National, right? Yeah. 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 So, plug that a little bit. Talk to us about that. Well, and we want to probably need to edit this. Like, it's coming up in a couple of weeks. That's subject to change, though. Okay. We okay. found out that May 13th is the day we have an OTA. Oh, shit. Okay. So, I'm actually going to go meet with Coach Reed and see if we can. Ah, um, uh, there we go. Yeah, work something out on, you know, getting guys there. To hopefully, turn it into a chief event. Get all the coaches and players to come out to it, Absolutely. too. Absolutely. Um, but we're going to keep it in the May window. Um, and it's going to be sick, man. The money that's going to be raised goes directly into Jay Reed and D, which goes directly back into Kansas City. Um, to help fund some of the summer camps that we're doing um, in the coding and STEM world and some of the projects that we do giving back to the community. So um, I'm really passionate about it. Um, I recognize that I didn't get to where I'm at on my own. And, you know, I want to be able to give opportunities to the next kid, you know, that otherwise wouldn't be able to find a passion if they aren't exposed to it. So it's just about exposure. It's about giving kids new experiences and helping them find um, what they want to do next in life. Yeah, because you, ha- you have a really cool coding event out in, in Vegas, right? Yeah, coding for the culture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we follow the Super Bowl wherever it's at, and we do a coding event. Um, so next year will be in New Orleans, which will be a lot of fun for me okay. as, a, as a Louisiana guy. Um, yeah. That's, that's, awesome. that's right there at home. Uh-huh. That's I get to save cool, some man. money on uh, hotels. <laughs> there we I, go. I ain't going to lie. When I heard coding, I didn't even know. I'm a small-town farm boy. I didn't even know what the hell coding was. Yeah, I didn't either. <laughs> I mean, I'm from Louisiana, bro. And I didn't know yeah. how to type before going to college. Yeah. <laughs> so you learn, like, what coding is. Like, that's becoming, like, these kids, that's the next big thing in this world, right? Yeah, and I think that two things about it is, one, it's not as intimidating or as hard as you think. You know, it's just another language. It's just like being able, once you learn what it is, it's really not that bad. Yeah. And then two, it's just about making it making it cool. You know what I mean? Like making it that's something that hey, you know, this is fun to do. My boy Kenny over there codes a little bit. Not yeah. a boy, Kenny. Right, Kenny. My man. 
<laughs> Kenny's over there. Kenny knows a little bit about coding. So how'd you get how'd you get into that and the coding side of things? Like so going to Stanford, it doesn't matter what you study. You could be a history major, English major, you could be um, a doctor, whatever. Everybody has to take two computer science classes. Really? Okay. Mandatory. Required. Required. Everybody, no matter what you're studying, wow. has to take two. And then from that, um, I knew I wanted to do business. There wasn't a business um, undergrad, so I did industrial engineering. Um, but from those coding classes, I've, it actually worked really well with the way that I think as an analytical thinker. Right. Um, and it just made sense. Like, it came naturally. So um, from there, I was like, man, this is, this is really cool, bro. And I ended up having to focus on uh, data science in, in my major. And, you know, that's, that's kind of the motivation for me doing J. Reed and D2 is I would have never known that if I wasn't exposed right. to it. So I want to provide that. Well, it's cool, and that's different. You know, it seems like a lot of guys do all do the same stuff. So that's mm -hmm. that's kind of a cool little niche. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let them know for your golf tournament, right? Because we're we're working on dates. There's still sponsorship opportunities. Yeah, absolutely. So you want to get involved with Jay Reed Indeed, guys? Go to the website. There's go a to ton the of .com. Um, Sponsorship opportunities, title sponsorship. Um, you can help out with the swag bags, or if you want to be on the give back side. Uh, you can get in, comp in contact with my director, and we can talk about ways that you could be a part of the uh, coding camps or, or other projects we got going on. You so, ever played the National? I did. I went and played like two days ago. How nice is nice. it? Yeah, it was pretty sick, oh, bro. So nice. So who's, who's so, uh, gonna, 18th hole is nuts. Yeah. 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 Who's going to be in your – is it a foursome or a threesome? Um, foursome. Who's your foursome? Do you know? Uh, not yet. Yeah. Not yet. I need to find a pro golfer to join my team. That would help. Because I want to win. That would definitely help. Yeah. <laughs> Who, who who you want to shout out? Because we'll, we'll we'll tag him in it. We'll work on it. Who you want? You want yeah. John Daly? Um, shoot, I'll take I'll take John Daly. I'll take Rory McIlroy. Rory. Um, shoot, man. Yeah, any any of those local guys in Kansas City too? Holler at me. Gary Woodland. Yep. Hey, what about Tom Watson? He's yeah, a little, Tom Watson. He's a little right older, here. but talk to me, Tom. He hey. could swing it. Talk to me, Tom. Tom still got some juice. Tom, <laughs> listen up. Your opportunity, bud. Come on now. <laughs> Let's win this thing, baby. Hey, and hey, and if not, if you need to fill in for a fourth. Just give me a shot. <laughs> I'm a 20. Hey, you, you, tr <laughs> trust me. Hey, you know what? We need we need me and you so that you know we can keep the score lower. Let's go. Yeah. You don't want this guy. Hey, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, if this is a, if this is a handicapped golf tournament, we are going to be untouchable. Yeah. Mark my word. Okay. We just see that. So what what's the coolest golf course you've ever played? Um, some of my favorites. I like um. I like the Phoenician a lot because I probably played my best round there. I had a plus, I had a plus eleven on that course, um, and I like Blackhawk. Both of them are in Phoenix, Arizona. Dude, Phoenix has so many Black good Hawk courses. Is sick. Yeah, Blackhawk. He pl played Wickapaw. I haven't. Oh, they got a boat there, a casino. Yeah. Go in there, hit a little blackjack, take a little felt. <laughs> go out there and tee it high and let that piss missile fly, baby. Yeah, I love it. I gotta ask, who's the best golfer on the Chiefs? Uh, probably Pat. I think really? Pat, yeah, okay. Pat has the lowest handicap. I think Trav is like mid teens. Um, next is probably me next. Okay. I love is it. Is there anything Pat can't do? I mean, geez. The guy's an athlete. My I'm goodness. A, I don't know if he can play safety though. You know, I've seen his high, I've seen his, his I bet he can't score. I bet he can't kick either. Yeah. Like you can. He yeah. ain't kicking. <laughs> he ain't kicking. He actually is the backup punter though. Really? He, dead ass. Wait, 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 wait. Dead ass. Not joking. Pat is the backup punter. I, is, nobody knows that. <laughs> I, I had never seen that on a depth chart. That is, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He can boot it, man. He's pretty good at it too. Oh my what, God, what in the world? I, I gotta know this real quick. When Pacheco's running, right? It's so fun to watch, dude. Our, do you love dude. it? It's so fun the, to watch. The comment. I don't know who said it. That said it looks like a kid trying on his shoes and like shield yeah. sporting goods, mm. like trying to test them out. Like, is it not just electric to watch, bro? I love it. You seen the videos too, where it's like um, him running and it's like him running like through the galaxy or running through, you know, next to horses or whatever. Like those little edits. Yeah, yeah, bro. It's so you fun run to watch. So hard. He's so physical. He's like a little energy bunny, I and mean, he just pops right back up too. Hits, pops up, runs back to the huddle, I love ready it. to go again. And dog. dog, dog, dog. Hey, McAfee, I'm sorry, dude. If you're watching this, we're gonna use dog. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you do too, man. Like, and I and you're a humble cat. I can tell. You play your ass off, right? Every single play, every game. I love watching it. That's why when this all came to fruition, yeah, I'm like, dude, you understand? Like, we've got historically one of the best safeties probably in the history of the Kansas City Chiefs coming to join us there's no, yeah. no doubt about it and so I we appreciate the praise bro. we appreciate you i mean there's a lot of stuff you could be doing yeah on a thursday yeah well and, i try and i try and, you know what i mean that's that's our opportunity to do what we love to do and you know it's not just about it's not just about me 
but it's about you know treating the game with the love and respect that it deserves and that's and the only way to do that is you go out and give 100 percent every play you don't take plays off um you want you want those young guys looking up to you to see how it's done so that they go out and do the same thing smacking cats i love it so have you seen the new the new renderings for the the upgrades i've seen some of them yeah, yeah. what do you think um I think it's nice. Yeah. Yeah. I won't really ever see any of it. I know. But I think it's going it, to yeah. be a while. Yeah, yeah. I think that is pretty cool, though. I yeah. think that it's overdue. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I just hope that no matter what happens, we don't lose the crazy, psychotic folks that come out no, there. No, that's what it's all about. That's what it's about. Because there's nothing one. really, f I mean, I love Arrowhead. There's nothing overly fancy. It's not like yeah. Jerry's world where it's like, you know, got, yeah. all, got all the yeah. bells and whistles, uh -huh. but that's what makes it so great. Yeah. It keeps is that it's that, about it football. Whole true, yeah. I'm there to watch a game. Uh -huh. Like Jerry's World, you go to the end zone, you buy a 2024 F-150 Lightning, right? <laughs> that's sweet. Sign the loan docs, $89,000 truck, finance, $80,000, uh -huh. right? You know what we're doing at Arrowhead? We're buying a $15 beer and we're buying 10 of them. <laughs> that's what we're doing. Yeah, hell yeah. Right? And that's the fan base. Uh huh. I freaking love. Yeah. And I'm sure you guys do too. Yeah, absolutely, man. We like we it. said, you feel it every time you step out on the field. Absolutely. I'm fired up for next year. Can't wait. Anything else you want to talk about? Anything else you want to plug? Obviously, talk about your nonprofit. Amazing um, what you do. Any nah, shout out? Any shout outs out there? That you, you want to give a shout out? Um, let's see. Uh, shout out! Shout out to my boy LJ being tagged, man. We want to keep you here. Also, Chris, man, when you need, we need to find Beach. Beach. Come on, Beach. Come on, Beach. You got to find a way to keep the boys home, man. Um, but other than that, man, just shout out all our viewers and bro, that, that yeah, tune yeah. in, bro. Appreciate I got to do a support. quick plug, actually. So, Sneed, right? Have yeah. you ever been Have you ever been to Zarda Barbecue? Uh-uh. No? He does the Kansas City Takeaway, it's called, at uh, Zarda, is he, is Zarda that Barbecue. One, is that the one that he has uh, the sandwich named after him? He does, yeah. So yeah, I heard about that. Actually. So, Zarda was just actually on the show like two episodes ago, and they brought in the, the Takeaway. Yeah. So, it was pretty cool because I guess... Sneed didn't want to name it after himself. He wanted to name it after yeah. the whole yeah. secondary. Yeah. So you'll have to get you one. I love that. I love that. You'll have to get you one. Definitely. I heard he's kind of a shy dude. Nah, he's not shy. No? That's nah, what they nah, were saying. He's not shy. He's, he's quiet. Shy. Quiet. Okay. He's quiet. He's not shy. Yeah. Yeah. You've seen, you've seen the mic'd up moments when he's on the phone. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He comes after people. He's yeah. not shy. Oh, no. That's yeah. another one. <laughs> yeah. Dog. Dog. <laughs> Speaking of Chris Jones real quick, was that not the funniest shit that you had ever seen with him and, and uh, the Kelsey boys on New Heights? They talk about his, his combine. Oh, yeah, when he came out, yeah, he had one slip out. <laughs> it's such a Chris thing to do, brother. The guy's constantly a comedian. Is he, is, he the funny, is he the funniest dude on the team? He's jokes all day long. All day. Yeah, all he, day. Is he the class clown? Yeah, I would say Clyde, Clyde and uh, Jared McKinnon are probably one and two. No kidding. And then Chris is somewhere up there in the top, top three to five. Two little dudes in the background or in the backfield cutting up. Yeah. That's awesome. Got to have them. I love it. Dude, we appreciate you, man, so much. Absolutely, um, man. This was fun. Have an amazing time off. And uh, just know we're always going to be major fans of you. Um, and get ready to go this year. Let's go back to back to back, baby. Hey, let's do repeat, it. baby. Guys, that's going to do it. Justin Reed, two-time Super Bowl champ, baby. Time to break the huddle. Cheers. Cheers.